Everyone is familiar with skydiving. It is a thrilling but dangerous activity where a person jumps out of an airplane over 10,000 feet above the Earth's surface. They let themselves fall until they reach an altitude of 3,000 to 5,000 feet. That is when they activate their parachutes to create safe landings for themselves. Skydivers wear jumpsuits or wingsuits to protect themselves and assist with their drag and fall rate in the air. The suits are designed with poly cotton, spandex, nylon, or cordura to help maintain comfort and a steady descension rate. Of the two types of skydiving suits, the more popular choice is the wingsuit because it allows a jumper to slow down their vertical descent speed and increase their horizontal gliding speed. Wingsuiting is particularly popular with an alternative form of skydiving called base jumping, where a person jumps from an elevated fixed object like the top of a mountain, skyscraper, bridge, or cliff. Even though base jumping involves much lower altitudes than plain base skydiving, the wingsuits decrease the rate of descent to make the experience last longer. However, many critics say that base jumping is more dangerous than skydiving because the altitudes of the jumps are only between 200 and 5,000 feet. Such low altitudes don't give jumpers much time to open their parachutes after they jump, which increases their risk of injury and death. Since 1981, over 400 people have died from wingsuit jumps worldwide. The death rate is estimated to be one out of every 500 wingsuit jumps. Surprisingly, most of these deaths were from wingsuit flights rather than base jumps. I guess there is something to be said about jumping from lower altitudes after all. Fortunately, many wingsuit jumpers who suffered accidents have survived and lived to talk about them. Some of their injuries required them to undergo long-term rehabilitation and recovery periods. But even after their long road to recovery, many decided to return to wingsuit jumping because they love the thrill and excitement of the experience. Who could blame them, right? There have been hundreds of wingsuit accidents within the last century. Some of them have been more notable than others based on their circumstances and the courage displayed by the wingsuit jumpers. Let's review the top 12 most notable wingsuit accidents and what they had to go through before and after their accidents. Number 12, Vince Reffitt was a renowned French wingsuit base jumper and skydiver who performed around 1,400 wingsuit base jumps and 17,000 parachute jumps. One of his most notable jumps was in 2014 when he did a base jump off the top of the tallest skyscraper in the world, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai of the United Arab Emirates. The building is approximately 2,717 feet tall, giving Refet the world record title for the highest base jump ever. Refet was more than a daredevil base jumper and skydiver. He was also an instructor and a pilot of the innovative jet-powered wingsuit, an advanced wingsuit model with small size jet engines attached to the feet. This jet wingsuit allows users to increase their horizontal flying speed and vertical ascension capability. Refet was one of the key figures who demonstrated the jet wingsuit to spectators in Dubai. In February 2020, while wearing his high-tech jet wingsuit, Refet ascended from the ground using the compulsion from the jet engines to lift his body into the air. It was the first time on record that a wingsuit base jumper ever used the ground as their starting point instead of a tall building, mountain, or helicopter. Refit used the jet power of his wingsuit to ascend to 6,000 feet above the ground. He even achieved a whopping speed of 150 miles per hour in the air. History was made that day in the base jumping community. Jet-powered wingsuit jumpers could now fly up like birds from the ground instead of always jumping down to the ground. At least, that was how Refit described it. On November 17, 2020, nine months after his miraculous demonstration, Refet suffered a fatal accident with his jet-powered wingsuit in Dubai. He died during a training exercise with his jet wingsuit in the desert after he suddenly flipped upside down in the air and flew straight into the ground at jet-fast speed. There didn't seem to be enough time for him to open his parachute to prevent the crash. He died immediately upon impact with the ground. Refet will always be remembered as the Dubai Jetman, because of his commitment to revolutionizing the jet-powered wingsuit and demonstrating its remarkable abilities to the world. Number 11, Viktor Kovacs was a 40-year-old wingsuit flyer and daredevil from Hungary. 
He performed over 700 wingsuit base jumps and won the Hungarian National Wingsuit Championship three times. On October 9, 2013, Kovacs died while training for the Red Bull World Wingsuit League World Championships. The training occurred in Tianmen Mountain National Forest Park of northwestern China, a popular location for international wingsuit flyers and base jumpers to practice and train. Kovitz's body was found with a crushed skull at the base of a nearly 328-foot-tall cliff in the National Park. An investigation into the incident suggests that Kovitz could not deploy his parachute at the appropriate time because of severe wind conditions or equipment failure. News of the incident spread throughout Xinhua, China's state-run media agency. Three other wingsuit flyers had jumped around the same time as Kovats, and they parachuted and landed successfully. Spectators on the ground witnessed Kovats failing to deploy his parachute. A few moments later, they could not see him anymore. Everyone assumed the worst had happened to him. It took nearly 200 rescue workers to search for and recover Kovats's body in the challenging terrain of the forest. Tianmen Mountain has cliffs as tall as 2,300 feet. Even though Kovats was an experienced wingsuit-based jumper and skydiver, there was not much he could have done if his equipment failed unexpectedly. It was a terrible accident and tragedy for all wingsuit competitors and enthusiasts. Number 10. On January 16, 2012, a professional wingsuit pilot and base jumper named Jeb Corliss suffered a life-threatening crash while performing a routine base jump in his wingsuit. He jumped from a flat-top mountain called Table Mountain, which overlooks the city of Cape Town in South Africa. Jeb has always been interested in flight since he was a little kid. He used to watch birds perch on the telephone poles around him and then fly down to the ground. Then they would spread their wings and start flying again. Watching the miracle of flight demonstrated by these birds made him want to grow up and fly in the sky like a bird. Since Jeb could not grow a pair of wings, he did the next best thing and started practicing wingsuit base jumping. It made him feel like the birds he used to watch when he was a kid. For Jeb, it was a dream come true. Jeb made one colossal mistake before the jump when he arrived at Table Mountain on January 16, 2012. As Jeb describes it, his biggest mistake was losing his fear. That loss of fear made him think he was invincible during the jump, but then all of a sudden he hit a lower rock ledge on the mountain as he descended. The area of his legs between the hip and knee had struck the top of the rock ledge on the mountain. At the time, Jeb thought he could skim over the rock ledge without suffering much impact, but his calculation was off, causing him to hit the ledge, tumble forward, and lose control for a few moments. He deployed his parachute after dodging other rock ledges during his remaining descent. But because he didn't have stability in the deployment, he spun around until he crashed into the ground. When his friends found him, he was in an unconscious state. Jeb had to be airlifted out of the mountain and to the Red Cross Air Mercy Service in Cape Town. When he finally regained consciousness, he was glad to be alive. Unfortunately, Jeb learned that he had broken both his ankles, three toes, and a calf bone. He also suffered a severe gash in his skin, which required him to get skin grafts to close back up. These injuries would keep him from wingsuit base jumping for at least six months. Jeb eventually recovered from his injuries and returned to base jumping. In 2015, Jeb was quoted as saying, I know 100% that this sport is going to kill me. That makes me take it very seriously. So far, Jeb is still alive and lives an adventurous life with his wife, Ali DeMeo, in Venice, California. Number nine. Alexander Poli was a 31-year-old Italian-Norwegian base jumper who died on August 21, 2016, after crashing into a tree at an elevation of 1,500 meters in the Couloir Ensa near Chamonix, which is a commune and alpine town in southeastern France. According to a mountain rescue worker, it is a popular and dangerous area for base jumpers. Many accidents happen here due to base jumping, some fatal. Polly was a dual citizen of Italy and Norway and a beloved member of the World Wingsuit League. The league described him as an inspiration to new generations of base jumpers and a free spirit who will be missed. Perhaps his most famous jump was in Montserrat, Spain in 2013 when he jumped out of a helicopter and passed through the narrow Batman cave opening at 155 miles per hour. 
The jump was recorded on video and uploaded to YouTube, receiving over 13 million views. His friends described him as an adrenaline junkie who used to jump off mountains and descend through rock faces as fast as 150 miles per hour. To honor Pulley's memory, his best friend and wingsuit flying partner, Carlos Briseno Schuta, jumped from the 3,842-foot peak of Aiguille du Midi, which towers over Chamonix. This had been Polly's favorite place to do base jumps, so Shuta thought paying homage to his friend in this way was fitting. Polly had no formal training in wingsuit jumping. He and Shuta taught themselves to do base jumps through trial and error. They wore nylon-webbed wingsuits to ascend in the air after jumping from helicopters and mountain peaks. Sometimes they would reach over 200 miles per hour and glide inches past buildings and rock faces. Polly was well aware of the dangers involved in base jumping but he felt the high-octane thrill of the experience was worth the risk. Shuta had jumped with Polly on August 21, 2016, the day Polly crashed into a tree and died. Shuta said he didn't see Polly's parachute open when they were supposed to deploy them. Polly ended up crashing into a tree and dying almost immediately. There was no time to rescue him and save his life. It was a horrible tragedy, but Polly would say he died doing what he loved. Shuta does not feel responsible for what happened to his wingsuit jumping partner because Polly would have done the jump no matter what. Polly will be remembered as a rock star in the wingsuit base jumping community. Some have even called him the Jimi Hendrix of base jumping because he was a fearless risk taker who loved recording and uploading videos of himself doing wingsuit jumps. Number 8. Eric Dos Santos, a former Navy pilot from San Diego, always dreamed about going wingsuit base jumping in Chamonix, France. He heard many stories about other wingsuit jumpers going there to base jump because of all the cliffs and mountains in the area. Some even refer to Chamonix as the birthplace of extreme wingsuit jumping. On September 29, 2016, Eric Dos Santos decided to make his dreams come true by wingsuit base jumping in Chamonix. Unfortunately, Eric joined the ranks of several other wingsuit jumpers who get injured at Chamonix every year. He made the same mistake that many other wingsuit jumpers make, which caused him to lose control of his speed and altitude and crash into a tree. He had a camera mounted to his helmet, capturing the entire jump on video. The good news is that his mistake did not cost him his life the way it cost many other jumpers their lives. Eric slammed into the tree at over 90 miles per hour, a collision which should have killed him but didn't. He was that one in a million who survived a wingsuit accident of such speed and intensity. However, he didn't walk away uninjured because he suffered several brutal injuries from the accident. According to Eric's GoFundMe page, his injuries included a left scapula fracture, left acromion fracture, left neck abrasion, left clavicle fracture, three left side rib fractures, left hemopneumothorax, liver laceration, head trauma, and multiple scalp lacerations. Despite having good health insurance, Eric's policy didn't cover all his injuries. For instance, Eric needed to treat his head trauma with hyperbaric oxygen therapy to stimulate the healing process in the body. Since his health insurance didn't cover this procedure, he needed to raise money through GoFundMe to cover the medical costs. He ended up raising over $1,000. Eric had been skydiving for four years before jumping from the mountain peak in France. He made approximately 550 jumps and 900 dives with a wingsuit. So he felt confident in his skydiving and base jumping skills to do the base jump in Chamonix. But the problem was that he didn't progress in the air as he was supposed to, ultimately leading to the crash. Ever since then, Eric has tried to educate other aspiring base jumpers to learn from his mistakes so they don't get injured. Number 7. On July 27, 2018, Nicolas Galli did a wingsuit flight jump over Boulogne-Quercy in France. When he jumped out of the plane, the 40-year-old Galley descended for about 20 seconds before being killed by the wing of the aircraft. According to reports, the French pilot operating the plane had descended the aircraft right after Galley jumped from it. He allegedly descended toward the aerodrome tarmac below. But what he didn't realize was that he was descending the plane toward Galley's direction, causing a wing to decapitate and kill him. 
The pilot's name has not been officially released, but some reports show his name as Alain C. The Midi Pyrenees Skydiving School Association was the French pilot's employer. They received a fine of approximately 20,000 euros for the incident. As for the pilot himself, he was arrested and charged with involuntary manslaughter over the death of Gali. A Montauban criminal court found the pilot guilty and gave him a suspended sentence over the incident. He was also banned from flying for one year. The court discovered that the pilot did not consult Galley regarding the plane's planned trajectory, so Galley did not know that the pilot would descend the aircraft toward the same path Galley was gliding. A lawyer for Emmanuel Frank, one of Galley's relatives, accused the pilot of engaging in a lot of recklessness or negligence. Galley was an engineer and experienced skydiver. He was one of two wingsuit skydivers on board the single-engine aircraft flying over Bolo-Concursi on July 27, 2018. Galley and the other jumper leaped out of the plane at an altitude of 4,400 feet. The skydivers were using their webbed wingsuits to glide in the air. They fell about 1,000 feet before the pilot descended the plane toward them. The left wing of the aircraft struck Galley, killing him. The pilot claimed he did not see the wingsuit skydivers after they jumped, so he assumed he was clear to descend. He also argued that wingsuit skydivers are more complicated than straight vertical freefall skydivers because they don't descend as quickly as parachutists. The pilot even claimed that Gailey did not follow the planned course he was supposed to take and that it wasn't his responsibility to remind him. The pilot's license was not even active when he took Gailey up in the plane for the jump. According to court reports, the pilot violated certain aviation restrictions in the past, which caused his pilot's license to be revoked. For this reason, the court also found him guilty of operating an aircraft without a valid aeronautical license. More robust security measures have been implemented since the wingsuit accident happened in France pilots must now brief their jumpers about the plane's trajectory before the jumps. Number six, Canadian Graham Dickinson was a 29-year-old experienced wingsuit pilot and base jumper who loved being a daredevil. On January 25, 2016, he performed a wingsuit base jump off the peak of Tianmen Mountain in Heaven's Gate, a remote area in central China. But his jump lasted a mere 12 seconds before his life ended. It was an hour before sunset when Dickinson jumped off the mountain. The temperature was about five degrees Celsius and some light winds picked up. These were ideal jumping conditions for base jumping because the winds help carry the wingsuit in the air horizontally. Dickinson knew that because he was a professional base jumper who made his living jumping out of airplanes and off cliff peaks. In fact, he planned every jump down to the last detail by studying topography data and using a laser rangefinder to measure the slope and altitude of the environment. Chenmen Mountain has an opening in its rock face about the size of a football field. When Dickinson jumped off the cliff on that fateful day, he tried to do a 180 degree turn to maneuver through the opening, but he did not complete the maneuver successfully, leading to him crashing a couple of hundred meters above the ground. It was a sad day for everyone in the base jumping community. Chenmen Mountain is in the central province of Hunan, Xinhua, China. The area is known for its magnificent sandstone pillars which make it the perfect location for wingsuit professionals and enthusiasts to perform their jumps. Dickinson previously came in third place in the 2016 World Wingsuit League China Grand Prix at Tianmen Mountain. He went back there to the mountain to train for another competition. When Dickinson never returned from his jump, the news about him missing spread fast. The World Wingsuit League announced his passing on Facebook after his body was discovered. People will remember him for the astonishing 2,250 wingsuit base jumps he made over his short life. It is a record other wingsuit jumpers wish to live up to achieving themselves. Number five, Johnny Strange was a record-breaking adventurer. He showed interest in performing adventurous feats from an early age, thanks to his two adventurer parents, Brian Strange and Dianette Wells, who climbed Mount Everest. When Johnny was 17, he was deemed the youngest person ever to climb the Seven Summits, the highest mountains of all seven continents. 
He later became a professional wingsuit base jumper in his adult years. On September 28, 2015, Johnny prepared for a base jump from a mountain of the Erner Alps, which is a mountain range in central Switzerland that overlooks Lake Lucerne. As he waited for the weather to be just right for the jump, he called into the Kevin and Bean radio show of KROC 106.7 to do an interview about picking up hitchhikers. Johnny informed the radio host that he was going to do a very dangerous jump where he flew super close to stuff. The radio host seemed impressed with Johnny, especially the YouTube videos he made where he recorded himself doing risky base jumps in various parts of the world. Some videos he uploaded show him doing jumps everywhere from Malibu Beach to the North Pole. He did not seem to be afraid of anything in his short life. Three days after Johnny called into the radio show, his body was found after a wingsuit jump he made from the mountain Gitchen near Lake Lucerne. He suffered a wingsuit accident, resulting in his death on the mountain. On October 4th, 2015, a paddle out memorial was established in honor of Johnny next to his Zuma Beach home. He was only 23 years old when he died. Johnny may not have lived a long life, but he took more risks and went on more adventures than most adults, double or triple his age. After all, how many people can say they climbed Vincent Massif in Antarctica at age 12? He also climbed Mount Everest and Mount Elbrus and reached the South Pole and the North Pole. One of his most notable base jumps was in September 2010, when he and three other wingsuit jumpers did a base jump into the Grand Canyon. However, an unexpected setback occurred after their planned exit in the canyon was blocked off, causing them to be stranded and trapped with no food or water. Johnny and his friends spent two nights in the Grand Canyon before deciding to climb their way out, which they did successfully. Johnny proved himself a survivor after escaping the Grand Canyon in one piece. The 2010 Summer Youth Olympics awarded Johnny the Young Champion Award in Singapore, all of this before he was even 20 years old. Johnny lived life to the fullest and encouraged others to do the same. Even today, new generations watch his old YouTube videos and continue to follow in his footsteps. Number four. Liu Ning was a 24-year-old college student who loved posting videos of her various outdoor adventures on Weibo, such as her skydiving, diving, and skiing adventures. On May 12, 2020, Liu participated in a short film by a Beijing-based cultural media company about extreme sports and wingsuit jumping in Tianmen Mountain in Zhangjiajie, Hunan. Liu and her videographer performed a wingsuit helicopter jump for the film on May 12th. The helicopter positioned them over Tianmen Mountain at about 2,500 meters high. Liu made the first jump based on a pre-planned route they had made. The videographer jumped out of the helicopter after her. Liu disappeared approximately 19 seconds after jumping from the helicopter. The only explanation for the disappearance was that she deviated from the planned flight path. The weather was clear, so it could not have been the wind that made her fly in a different direction. The videographer, also in the air, lost sight of her after those 19 seconds. Liu and the videographer started descending at the same speed and direction toward the primary mountain of the Tianmen mountain range. When Liu deviated from the set path, the videographer signaled for her to deploy her parachute, but he didn't have time to follow her because he was dropping altitude too fast. So he had to spend time readjusting his flight path to bypass the mountain and return to the landing point safely. The last thing the videographer captured of Liu on video was her dropping hundreds of meters while displaying an abnormal posture. After that, Liu disappeared from the video because she was no longer within range of the camera. It was a horrific situation for the videographer and everyone who cared about Liu. Nobody knew where she was for several days because she was missing and no one heard from her. On May 18th, 2020, six days after the jump, a rescue team discovered Liu's body in an uninhabited dense forest area near the northern part of Yuhu Peak in Tianmen Mountain. The point where her body was found was around 2,000 meters from the original place where the helicopter took her away from the ground. People can still find her videos on Weibo and YouTube. Even though she is not alive anymore, her videos have gotten more attention than ever. Number three, Dr. Angelo Grubisic was an aerospace professor, university lecturer, and flying suit specialist who performed as a professional wingsuit athlete. 
On August 21st, 2019, the 38-year-old was killed after doing a wingsuit base jump in Saudi Arabia. Angelo was best known for leading an innovative wingsuit design team at the University of Southampton. His wingsuit designs earned him numerous awards and accolades, including being crowned a wingsuit champion in July 2019. He strived to design safer and more effective wingsuits to reduce the number of accidental jumping deaths. Angelo performed wingsuit base jumps all around the world. Everyone who had ever worked with him said he was captivating and an honor to be around. His family called him phenomenally talented because of his ability to create new and innovative wingsuit designs. He even helped solve the causes of other wingsuit jumper deaths. Now, Angelo has joined the statistics on wingsuit jumper deaths. According to some of his fellow flyers, Angelo performed a 360-degree barrel roll over the Asir Mountains of southwestern Saudi Arabia on August 21st. At a descent speed of 108 miles per hour, he slammed into a mountain ridge, which killed him right away. The British Foreign Office has contacted his family and local authorities about the incident. All Angelo ever wanted to do was break international wingsuit flying records. He started something called the Icarus Project because he wanted to prepare to break world records with his wingsuits. The Icarus Project's primary goal was to wingsuit jump from an elevation of 45,000 feet and then glide as far as he could for at least 15 minutes. Angelo's sister and mother have started a foundation called Dr. Angelo Grubasic Young Engineers Fund. The foundation aims to assist underprivileged individuals with passion and creative skills to work towards science, technology, and engineering careers. Number two, Uli Emanuele was an Italian wingsuit base jumper and pilot who made several iconic wingsuit flights. He also liked video recording his jumps and sharing them with the world. But the 29-year-old never thought that he would one day be recording his own death from base jumping. In 2016, he did a base jump from the top of the Dolomite Mountains in Switzerland, which ultimately resulted in his untimely death. After wingsuit jumping from the mountaintop, he lost control of his trajectory and crashed into a series of rocks. He didn't even have time to open his parachute because he crashed into the rocks before he could. The crash killed the young Uli, which shocked the World Wingsuit League and his fellow wingsuit jumpers. People remember Uli best from his YouTube video, showing him flying through a two meter wide cave in a wingsuit. He also won the Extreme Base Jump World Championship in Spain in 2010. According to his Facebook post, Uli loved finding new places to jump and new terrain flight lines. Many people who knew Uli were shocked to hear of his passing because he was always careful with his jumps. Some even described him as being like a surgeon operating when it came to preparing for wingsuit jumps. But it shows you that even the most professional and careful wingsuit professionals can still face problems. Uli loved using the GoPro camera to video record his jumps. The YouTube video of his wingsuit flight through the two meter cave has over 15 million views in the last eight years. He spent three years preparing for that flight because it was incredibly complex and technical, but it was a jump he dreamt about for a long time and he was determined to see it through. Uli completed his dream wingsuit jump successfully. Most wingsuit jumpers never even attempt a jump as tricky as that because of the increased danger. Uli completed it and proved that planning well in advance can be a good strategy for staying safe and avoiding accidents. But now that Uli has died, critics wonder whether planning enough in advance guarantees no accidents. Perhaps the truth is that you cannot entirely prevent wingsuit accidents, no matter how much you plan ahead. Instead, a wingsuit jumper should gain experience use a high quality wingsuit and learn from others who have done jumps already. Number one, on March 29th, 2014, New Zealander Dan Vickery was 33 years old when he jumped from a helicopter over the Luchental area near Interlaken, Switzerland. Two other wingsuit jumpers accompanied him, including an American named Brian Drake and a Frenchman named Ludovic Worth. The three of them were supposed to land in a predetermined valley. However, something made the trio deviate from their set path, causing them to fly over the wrong mountain ridge. As a result, they crashed into an alpine pasture, killing Dan and Ludovic right away. Drake survived about four days in the hospital before he died as well. 
Vickery was an extreme sportsman who loved the idea of human flight ever since he was a child. He had a long track record of making successful wingsuit jumps with his two partners. But Vickery's calculations must have been off during his fatal flight because he came up 10 meters short of the intended slope. The entire flight took about 80 seconds after jumping from a height of 2,750 meters. If they had taken the steep path above the mountain ridge like they were supposed to, they would still be alive today. But what they did was go around the ridge and head for a steeper downhill terrain. The ridge blocked the visibility of the terrain, so Vickery and his colleagues did not see it until they were right there to face it. Soon after, they crashed into the ground and soon died. Vickery was one of the most experienced wingsuit flyers in the world. He completed over 450 wingsuit flights, 750 wingsuit base jumps, and 6,000 skydives. And yet he still managed to make an unfortunate mistake which cost him his life. As you can see, wingsuit accidents often result in the death of the jumpers. Considering that the wingsuit jumpers travel at over 100 miles per hour, you can imagine the impact it would have when crashing into a mountain ridge or peak. The way a wingsuit jumper collides with the terrain at high speed will determine their level of injury or risk of death. Anyone looking to become a wingsuit jumper should study other jumpers and understand the risks involved. You could acquire a lot of experience, skill, and knowledge in wingsuit jumping, but it won't guarantee anything when descending thousands of feet from the air. Most wingsuit accidents happen because people crash into ridges and mountains. So, you might be better off jumping from helicopters or airplanes in areas without ridges and mountainous terrains. But if you decide to do wingsuit base jumping, you will have no choice but to jump from elevated areas like those on the ground. That is where you must apply all your concentration and skill to avoid crashing into anything. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to stay tuned for future videos on this channel.